we are gonna walk up this little mountain because apparently you can't drive. So we just went behind us there in the parking lot, left our car, and we're gonna go for a hike up to go see this castle. And we're gonna go have a picnic, Julia and I, up there. So we're gonna film it and show you guys a bit of the view of Martini and uh, talk a little bit about the city. <laughs> We did do this before, but we didn't film it last time, so now we're doing it so that we can share with all of you guys on YouTube. We're already starting to see a nice view, just from like that little walk up. Oh, yeah, we have to walk all the way up. Here's what's fascinating in Switzerland is that they like use every single space they've got so here you're like on this like cliff and yet they've managed to like grow vineyards up there they've got bees little bee boxes beehives and it's just like it's amazing so they like totally use every single space they have yeah. there's the castle ahead of us but uh now that we're here i remember the walk and i remember last time everyone complaining because it's a hike straight up and there's like shortcuts but we're not wearing the proper kind of shoes we want to take one of the shortcuts to hike up i'll show you what a shortcut looks like just to see so you see what i mean there's a shortcut like straight up right so you take the windy road or you can like hike up but i don't think that's a good idea not with your shoes or with my shoes so up we go but it works out good because tomorrow Julia and I are doing a big long road trip. So this is our exercise to, you know, stimulate the circulation before we take the long trip. We decided to take up the challenge. Ah. We're walking up the mountain on the cliff. Look at this. You can't even see, but basically it's like straight up. And these are the shoes that we've got on. Like totally, wait, you can't see my shoes. These are the shoes, so really not proper shoes to be walking up. I know, slippery. We can do it. I mean, we have poles here, so we can hang on to the poles, worst case scenario. I think we took like a back road or back path. This doesn't seem like the normal path to take. Maybe this is just to see a viewpoint. Oh shoot, we made it all the way around? Yeah. We came to a dead end. Here's the view of Martini though. It looks very industrial, but its placement is key for people who want to ski. Because over to the right, if you go up there, up that road, basically that you see in the distance up there, that brings you to Verbier, which is like a really well-known ski village. So you're up there in like maybe 25 minutes max. And then you're like right at the crossroads here of where the Rhone kind of does a 90 degree angle so it comes from there in a distance I'll show you that too it comes from like there comes down and like literally cuts in a 90 degree angle and goes towards like Geneva so how did that car come up he must be working here we wanted to cheat and drive the car up but it had a specific sign saying no no people coming yeah let's go have a picnic so there's the big tower of the castle. It's strategically placed, placed to catch people coming, I guess, over top of the mountain over there and then coming in from the valley. So you have a really good viewpoint from everything. So this is the view that we have for our little picnic. There's Julie over there. <laughs> Got nice tables set up. It's like being in the western United States. Yeah, why? Because of the wood? Yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of like, looks kind of ranchy. Yeah, exactly. I think they must do like activities here for kids or schools because like they have full functioning bathrooms over there and I'm not sure. Like there's also this thing over there. What is that kind of wooden structure? Must have been used in the old days for something. But yeah. So it looks like we're in the Midwest, except for you've got mountains in front of you and vines growing over there in a the distance, so, and a castle. 
we were just saying that like we can hear the kids that are playing like way over there in a distance and it's pretty far so the sound travels super far and um i'm not sure if you've ever seen like those horns what are they called they're they're basically these long 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 horns and then they go up they're like from the alps right and um the reason why they play those is like back in the day if they would like play a certain tune or a certain way then that's that was the way they would communicate so like before phones and everything like that because it would have probably taken so long just to get down the mountain up to the other side so they would like play it from one side and then the other people would hear it and then they would play it so the next you know village would hear it and so on and so forth so they would be able to communicate like if there was an emergency or if there was like probably I don't know I'm just guessing but probably like if there was a celebration like a wedding or maybe if there was like a funeral and they were able to communicate that way um, again, I'm guessing that, so that might not be fully accurate, but they did communicate that way. So it's pretty cool. And I guess the sound would really like resonate, right? With the mountains, depending on how far of a distance it would be, but we can certainly hear those kids and they've got to be about like a kilometer away from us. So we thought of um, a few things to tell you about Martini and um, some of the cool things that they have going on here. So, um, well, first thing is, um, it goes back from like four years ago when we first arrived. We were following Google Maps and I'm not sure if I had like a setting off or something like that, but maybe this has happened to you where you like are following a road and you realize only after that you could have taken like a different road. And behind us, there's like this like crazy, like when I say crazy, I'm like, it's like an insane mountain pass. And for whatever reason, instead of taking like the normal kind of highway, which would have been probably the St. Bernard Pass, which is like a normal, you know, pass to get over the mountain, we like went all the way this way and it was nighttime. And it was like my first time um, driving back again manual because I was the one driving. Tyler at the time didn't know how to drive the stick shift. And um, it was just crazy. So that was like our first kind of like encounter. And what we figured is because um, the Romans occupied Martini, it would have probably been a really strategic point. That's why they would have this big tower there so that they can kind of see everyone coming from the valley. And then they would have probably controlled the St. Bernard Pass. So that either it was like a taxation or maybe they can control things coming in from Italy or all that kind of stuff. So um, what else is cool? Um, well, here in Martini, there's a lot of wind. So you mm -hmm. see kite surfing. So there's this one gas station and like there you see a lot of people doing kite surfing. Yeah, like behind the gas station, there's like almost like a, a little mini lake and like mm -hmm. people are kite surfing and doing all these like tricks and stuff like that. And I think they get all the wind because it kind of comes in from the valley, like all the wind probably comes in and this gets stuck and it has to go the other way. So uh, it's kind of neat. We'll show you the kind of the main city center and the city hall because it's really pretty. Um, Here in um, Martini, um, you'll see the great St. Bernard dogs and there's actually a museum where you can actually go and see them mm -hmm. and yeah it's really cool <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. So those great St. Bernard dogs in the olden days or like back in the day, they would use those to save people from like if there was an avalanche, it would be the dogs that would go first. And then they would actually, you know how you see in like the movies or something, they have these like little pouches in front of them. Well, in there would have been like probably the medical kit and stuff like that. And they would be able to go and sniff where the people were and start digging and then, you know, get the rescue now it's all done by helicopters. So if there's an avalanche, they come in with a helicopter, they go down and, but there are still some kind of rescue dogs because um, one day we did a four hour hike and it was like, I don't know, 30 degrees. It was like super hot. And um, at the end we were just, we just can continue. And so we ended up hitchhiking down the mountain and the guy who picked us up was one of these guys who does the rescues. So he's explaining to us um, like how they rescue people and how it was in the past. And in the back, he had his little rescue dog with him. So it was like the dog that, that goes along with him in, in all the rescues. And it was really cool. 
because he was telling us like within I think three or four minutes from when he gets the call he has to be like fully geared up and then he tells the helicopter exactly his location and they like come and get him and then off they go to um to do the rescues so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool here in june as well they have a festival called five colors right mm -hmm. and basically it's um a food festival and you can try food from a whole bunch of different countries yeah festival yeah it's um i always laugh with julia <laughs> she says festival instead of festival um, but yeah, you can try all the different things and then they have all the dances, right? Mm -hmm. Stands and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a nice, nice festival. <laughs> is just behind us like is basically Chamonix. Chamonix is like known worldwide because it's like a really good ski location and then you have Mont Blanc so it's basically kind of like just at the foot if you will at, at Mont Blanc which is like you know the highest mountain in all of Europe so it's pretty cool. Well this is better to show you what it looks like. So here that's the castle there. So it's built in um, 1258. It's called Chateau de la Batias. And here is we go. Film? This is the normal way in that most people take. Instead, we took like the crazy hike like trail you can up. Watch a movie and it's two bucks. Okay, so they play movies and stuff. Children under ten are free. Okay, cool. So they play movies and obviously they do like events and stuff like that. So the medieval fortress of Bactias of Martini. <laughs> He's going to explain. We figured out what this was because we okay. we were able to read. So back in the 12th cycle, century, century, yeah. Um, this used to be one of their like strongest weapons because mm. basically you put um, heavy stuff, like up to 125 grams, right? Kilograms. I think Kilograms. in that thing right down there. I think. And it then you put something there. heavier here, and then it throws it up in the air all the way to wherever. To their enemy. And it probably, like it says, that it was one of the most powerful weapons back in the day. So, here you go. Can they go up to 16.5 meters high? 16 meters, yeah, in height. That's how high it would go. And then it goes up to 220 meters distance. So not, not that far, but they would have probably wheeled it over and then flung it at the enemy coming down with them. Yeah. What's this one? And then this one. Let's go find out what this one is. Uh, yeah, so 150 meters up to 100 kilograms. They boulette, those are like like almost like little cannons. And um, I think it worked the same thing where you have that thing that would just fling out. And there's another one. <laughs> so I think this area, because see here that you've got a spot for like maybe the old time wrestling, it looks like, like the Swiss wrestling. They've got like this door, and they've got all these like old still weapons that are here that they used to have from that long ago which is insane so it probably would have been when the romans were occupying I this area so. and i think they probably use this as an educational spot because like they've got all the picnic areas and really neat things here but yep very cool now they just make crazy bombs and then back in the olden days that's what they would use okay i just saw something extremely tempting I just found right on the floor these grapes. So, oh, you want to eat them? Well, not those, but look at all these grapes that are just easily accessible on the vines. I mean, what's one little bushel of grapes going to do to the vineyard guy who's like planting his grapes? This is like the grapes from Swiss 
that they're gonna make Swiss wine with that like you don't see any Swiss wine in any store anywhere around the world and I think there's two reasons why I think the first reason is because it's probably too expensive because the wages are so much higher so for them to export it doesn't make sense and the second reason is probably so good that they just keep it all to themselves kind of like the Calle chocolate you just can't buy it anywhere else because it's so good they just are like well we're just gonna keep the good stuff for us so you want to so try it? All right, here we go. Hopefully there's not tons of pesticides on it. It's really good. Mm, you gotta try it, Julia. Okay. They're like the size of blueberries. Look They're at them. sweet. Mm -hmm. They're really tiny. Really good. They're really good. Mm, yummy. Let's try one here on this season. And the reason we did this is we need a little bit of energy to make it down the mountain. So <laughs> in case anyone's wondering why we just like, and we need some dessert too. We're gonna have dessert with us. Mm -hmm. One last one for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this road's much better. I think, like, honestly, last time we did the exact same thing. We took the crazy hike thinking, oh, let's do that. And then we didn't realize it. So somehow we forget these things. Mm-hmm. All these little cafes. It's really, really pretty. Some beautiful greenery and little fountains. We should almost cut off the cars from driving through. But it is what it is. You can't have it all. downtown is really pretty so they've got these cobblestone streets there's still cars allowed through them but it's quite quiet and then they have that whole sitting area let's go check out this town hall and everything like that and then I can share the prices with you to let you know how much it is let me check so here in this museum to go in for an adult it's 12 um, francs and for a child just to 16 years old it's seven francs seven francs yeah so thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching our tour of Martini Switzerland make sure you subscribe so you can be notified of some of the upcoming videos I think some of the future ones we're going to start doing very soon is going to be all the past trips so you'll be able to come with us and um, see some of the wonders of the world. See you next time! Bye! Bye! <laughs>